I know what you're thinking. Yeah, yeah, never mind the pretty pictures. Just play us the sound clip of the Akrapovich. All right, here you go. <laughs> Right, so this is the third and probably the last mods and accessories video on my 2023 Transalp 750 and today I'm looking at the Akropovich exhaust and SW Motex Trax toolbox and new Dusk side carriers. If you spot other tasty looking accessories in the video like the Hepco and Becker lower crash bars or the bash plates, bark buster handguards or accessory bar above the dash and want more information then I invite you to check out part 1 and or part 2 links to which are in the description. So to the Akropovich slip-on. Now it took me three days to install. Now don't worry it wasn't because it was a difficult job on the contrary just two bolts a, literally a two minute job. Now what I was worried about was the noise and I'd been dragging my heels for a couple of days thinking I might well ruin my bike. See, the double-barreled factory end can makes rather a nice noise, slightly metallic but decently bassy and meaty at lower speeds. Not in the same league as my Speed Twin 1200, but not at all bad for a 750 Honda. But Tot Import, the official Akrapovich distributor for Spain and Portugal, were kind enough to send me the brand new slip-on for the Transalp for review. So, after years of wondering what all the fuss was about and why all Acra stuff is so pricey, I accepted. Worst case scenario, I thought, given that it's so easy to fit, I could just revert to factory and ship it back to them with a polite thanks but no thanks note. I'm not a noise junkie and I guess I was just worried it would sound like a tamer version of a straight through pipe that had been made just quiet enough to scrape through EU regulations. How wrong I was. Now, before we get to the all-important sound clips, just a quick word about fitting it to the bike. I weighed both to check the claims, and as you can see, there's a two kilo or about four and a half pounds saving with the new one. Strangely, Akropovich claim only a 1.6 kilo saving. Uh, you're never gonna feel a 1% 1 1 weight saving on the road anyway, but I'll take it. The manufacturer also claims a massive one horsepower and 1.3 Newton meters improvement in power, and again, while you can't feel it, I've no reason to doubt their figures, and any power gain is worth having. It has a black coated titanium outer sleeve on the muffler and features a newly designed end cap, also made of lightweight titanium. It's finished with a stainless steel link pipe and muffler inner structure, fully Euro 5 compliant, providing better performance and a deep, sporty sound. In case you hadn't already guessed, I'm reading from the marketing blurb here. Installation is plug and play, no remapping required, fully compatible with the original Honda side panniers, and I hope SW Motex. I'm not going to insult your intelligence by explaining how to install it. These are the instructions, not exactly rocket science. You unscrew the circlip that clamps the end can to the downpipe, unbolt the hanger from the passenger foot peg bracket, and remove, then you do the same in reverse to install the new end can. As I said, no ECU remapping is needed. It's literally a two minute job, although for some reason Akropovich seemed to think it will take half an hour. The only slight difficulty is the need for imperial wrenches because it's a Japanese bike, although I found I could get away with a 12 mm socket to remove the factory can. And you'll need a star Torx key to tighten the Acra clamp. I imagine this is their attempt to provide some sort of anti-theft security. It's roughly the same length as the factory can, but it feels a lot less bulky, which it is, of course, and it hangs slightly higher. There's about 20 millimeters between the tip and the side case now, whereas before the gap was more like 50 millimeters with the factory can. I'll be keeping an eye out for any potential heat damage and fitting a shield if necessary, but so far I haven't noticed any issues. How about the looks? Well, the factory can was a bit large, but not exactly ugly and certainly more elegant than the giant pedal bin you get with the Suzuki V-Strom. The Akropovich looks a bit cleaner and lighter, but it doesn't exactly jump out at you. I've had mine on for a couple of weeks now, and Mrs. RM hasn't noticed, for example. Overall, I do prefer the new look, but I think we'd all agree that fitting a new exhaust is mostly about the sound. The static clips were taken in my fairly large two-car concrete basement garage. 
with all the doors closed. My old iPhone 10 was placed on the pillion seat and I used the Decibel X app to record the noise levels while my iPhone 14 was used to capture the audio and video. Now of course I've heard this factory start up a hundred times since I got my bike nearly six months ago now. It's fairly bassy with its tweeter and woofer setup, slightly metallic at higher revs, but all in all quite decent for a Honda. Then out of respect for the scientific method, but mostly just for the hell of it, I started her up with no muffler on at all. With the Acrican safely in place, I have to admit that there was a fair bit of clenching and finger crossing going on. Have I just ruined my Transalp? Are my eardrums about to receive a pummeling? Is it just going to be a Euro 5 version of the straight through clip I just played? As this is the European version, it has a non-removable baffle, or at least a baffle that's riveted in place and which I have no intention of attempting to remove. Apart from the fact that it would be illegal and that the Portuguese police are particularly strict on things like this, a crop of it include an EU homologation certificate which I've put with the other documents under the seat, I actually prefer the softer, more subdued sound that the complete system provides. At least at a standstill, it has my approval. How about riding? Now it's always difficult to convey exhaust sounds accurately, mainly because wind noise gets in the way, but after a few hours experimenting with various combinations using the limited equipment I have, I found that the best results were to be had by putting my iPhone 14 in the pocket of my riding jacket, connected to an external mic, taped to the pillion seat with one of these fluffy wind muff things on. The thing is though, the accurate sound rendition came at the expense of the video. There isn't one. I did try clamping my old iPhone 10 to my RAM mount on the accessory bar and filming with that, but it vibrated like hell and for some reason the sound wasn't as good, so the sound here does not actually match the video. Okay, I think you get the idea. Compared to the factory exhaust, the sound is quite soft, but deeper and less metallic. The difference is subtle, but it's definitely there. Could I feel the extra horsepower or newton meter? No, of course not, but like the two kilo weight saving, I'll take it. I've put a link in the description to the Krapovich website where they've included full technical specifications and a couple more sound clips. Right, let's talk about the cost and whether I'd buy one or not. This is the big question. We all know that the Kropovich are up there with the likes of Olins and Brembo for not being shy when it comes to setting their prices. 
As I mentioned, Totim Port, the official Acropovich dealer for Spain and Portugal, were kind enough to send me this for review. They're a family-run business that's been around for over 20 years and are now one of the Iberian Peninsula's largest motorbike accessory retailers. So if you are in the EU, then definitely worth checking them out. Especially since, after a bit of online research, they do appear to be offering the this uh, Kropovich slip-on cheaper than any other reseller I could find. That said, including taxes, it's still 955 euros inclusive of shipping, which to all intents and purposes is 10% of the cost of the bike. So is it worth it? Would I pay the best part of a thousand euros for one? Well, I'm gonna give a yes and a no answer. If the Transalp were my only bike, and if I were going to hang on to it for a few years, then yes, I would seriously consider this NCAN. There are some quality materials in there, including titanium and stainless steel, which the factory can just doesn't get. This was the first time I'd ever messed with the exhaust on any bike I've owned. And to be perfectly honest, I was half expecting the result to be loud and obnoxious, but it was quite the reverse. I was genuinely surprised and impressed by the difference in sound. I'm not sure if it comes across on a YouTube video, but it's quieter, less metallic than the factory exhaust, and it makes the Transalp sound smoother, less vibey and more premium. Almost like the difference between a four-cylinder and a V6 in a car. Subtle, but definitely preferable, at least for me. That being said, and as regular viewers to the channel are aware, I've also got my Triumph Speed Twin to maintain and accessorise, and I do tend to change bikes quite often. Even if I have calmed down a bit over the last year or two, I've already got half an eye on the new BMW R1300GS, so no, it wouldn't really make sense for me personally to pay for the Akrapovic slip-on as much as I like it. But if you don't have to worry about staying on trend for YouTube, are enjoying your Transalp and intend hanging on to it for a while, then the outlay is more justifiable than you might imagine. It makes for a more significant upgrade than I thought it would. Right, on to SW Motec and their Trax Toolbox and brand new for 2023 Dusk Side Carriers, which this time I did pay for out of my own pocket. Both require the Pro Side Carriers, which I covered in the Mods and Accessories Part 2 video, and for the Trax Toolbox, which, because I don't always carry the large panniers, I wanted for storing emergency tools and rain jacket, it's simply a case of positioning it carefully on the inside of the frame and screwing in place. It's a bit fiddly but not difficult and the universal fittings offer enough flexibility to avoid the toolbox touching the bike. Simple but 3 litres of permanent storage for your essentials and you can add a lock to the door although I haven't bothered. The new Dusk cases are a sort of halfway house between the semi-soft blaze panniers that I've been using before and the more traditional Trax aluminium hard cases. The blaze do look good on just about any bike, but carrying capacity isn't the best for longer trips, and of course they're impossible to lock, either to stop people undoing the zips and helping themselves to what's inside, or just walking off with the bags themselves. Traditional hard cases are practical and tough, but I'd be worried about them crushing, perhaps even breaking my leg in the event of a fall, they also look a bit, well, traditional, and I was after something a bit more contemporary for what is a modern looking bike. So when SW Motec announced these a few weeks ago, I thought I'd give them a try. There are two variants, this 33 litre model and a larger 41 litre model that you can probably fit your helmet in. I say probably only because I haven't tested the larger case, but I can say with certainty that you won't be fitting a helmet inside this smaller model. I tried with the smallest helmet we have, the one Mrs. RM uses on the scooter when we go down to the beach, and as you can see, we're a long way from being able to close the lid. So this beggars the question, why didn't I go for the larger model, especially considering that the price is identical? Well, simply because of how much the overall width of the bike would increase. The carriers sit quite close to the chassis, but as you can see, even these smaller 33 litre cases protrude beyond the handlebars. The smaller cases are 25 centimeters deep and stick out about five centimeters beyond the bars on each side. The 41 liter model adds a further five centimeters, making the bike 20 centimeters or about eight inches wider at the rear, which isn't great in traffic. SW Motec went with a side opening design, which some like and some don't, 
SW Motec tell me that they did this to make the case stronger. They're developing soft inner bags, useful for taking into your hotel if you don't want to remove the cases from the bike, and these are due for release in the new year. You'll need a set of bike-specific pro side carriers to mount the cases too. I covered these in part two, link in the description. But once everything's bolted into position, attaching and removing the cases takes just a few seconds. I ordered the optional lock set, which allows you to lock the cases shut and lock them to the carriers, all with the same key. Although I imagine the lock picking lawyer would be able to open a lock like this just by staring at it. One advantage of the side opening design is that it can also be used as a top case and I guess this is where I would opt for the larger 41 litre model. I'm not a fan personally of big heavy top cases though so I continue to use my lightweight pro rear bag. A final word on repairability. If you drop your bike these are likely to hit the ground first and bear much of the weight. SW Motex say they've conducted extensive testing to ensure excellent overall strength. But I asked them about, for example, replacing a cracked lid or sheared hinges. They sent me this list of spare parts that are or will be available. There's pretty much everything except the two halves of the case. So if you split the lid on a rock, then I guess you're looking at the whole new case. Anyway, guaranteed repairability aside, I'm very happy with these cases. I think they look good. They're lightweight. They're very easy to take on and off. They're more secure than the soft luggage I used before, and they don't shake or rattle on or off-road. I think the forthcoming inner bags will make them easy to use though, as the side opening design does mean they're quite difficult to pack when you use them vertically, as I do. Anyway, that's all for this video. If you haven't already seen them, please check out parts 1 and 2, where I talk about the side carriers and crash protection. And as always, thanks for watching.